All right. Hi, everyone. I'm fairly certain that we're live. I always double check this. As you all know by now that I am paranoid about these things, um, but I'm fairly certain that we're good. And yes, we are. So hello. Um, this is Allison with the Gallatin County Democrats. I am joined tonight um, with Representative Kelly Cordham from House District 65. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Um, it is the end of a short, long week for you, um, correct? I would say that's accurate. Yeah. Uh, it has been a week at the legislature. Uh, we get four days off here for Easter, and then I think we come back and uh, uh, spar over the budget, and then I, I feel like it's winding down as, as far as committees and new bills go. So, yeah, yeah. that's what you were saying is like your committees. Um, which are state admin and local government and, and energy are, are kind of quiet now. Yes, um, people are running to get their bills, bills in at the last second, but really we're only hearing one or two new ones every time we have a committee meeting at this point. So I don't think we'll even have any next week, maybe one or two. Um, yeah, I think I think Wednesday is gonna be the last day to do any of that stuff. So yeah, uh, it's it's all budget people now and that's well out of my realm. So while that's comforting um, for me, uh, I, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna support the team however I can because yeah. it's, it's, yeah, a lot. It, it is a lot um, and it, it, there's no, like it, it just doesn't seem like there's any, um, even the, even the little wins um, seem to just kind of pass by now. So for example, a really terrible healthcare bill that would have um, kicked people off of Medicaid and the um, Montana Healthy Children um, CHIP program that died in committee uh, yesterday or the day before that was sponsored by Representative Jane Gillette out of Gallatin County. So that was a win that that died in committee. Um, but I, I honestly had forgotten that that even happened because like these, these small wins are just kind of overwhelmed by all of the other stuff that happened. Um, and so are there any other wins that we can talk about first starting on a high note? Yes, yeah, I can think of one from, I think yesterday, a uh, constitutional amendment um, by representative skis failed and it was a pretty big deal uh he had two of them going and one of them passed the one was to appoint by partisanship or something when there's a uh, vacancy at the state level but uh um, the one before that was a term limit one that would limit uh right now we're limited to eight years in the house and eight years in the senate you can go back and forth every eight years this would limit you to 16 years in both houses for life um, 16 years total. So you could do like eight in the Senate, eight in the House, and then be done or something like that. Okay. And uh, that failed because uh, a lot of that institutional knowledge you need uh, from the old timers would go away with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it would just give you more power to lobbyists. And, but right. that failed, but the other one passed. So we'll see if it makes it past the Senate. But yeah, just little things like that. And like you said, for every one victory, uh, or every one good stop, there's 10 bad bills that make it through, given our numbers. So it's it's overwhelming. Right yeah, now. yeah, it, it is overwhelming. And it, um, you know, I, I will be honest, it's really demoralizing. And I, I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way. Um, and because this isn't the state that we love and that we care about and that we know can be better. Like, Montana, we care about one another and a lot of the things that we're seeing, especially on the policy side, have been so damaging um, to our, you know, LGBTQ community and, you know, minority community, um, Native American um, population, like they're, they're just, this is just not Montana um, that, that I love um, anyway and, and why I stay here, but, um, so, kind of, so thinking about uh, one bill that came up that I thought had a good chance of passing and, and maybe you thought it too, that ended up not passing on the third reading in the House was um, House Bill 613, which was the 
Um, could you like explain that one a little bit for us? Yes, thank you, Allison. That bill meant a lot to me. I didn't put a ton of the work into it like a lot of folks did. I had my own battles, but um, House Bill 613 would allow uh, reservations um, to have satellite offices at hard to reach areas. Um, in many places, people were driving 30 or 40 miles to vote at the county seat um, in the election. So uh, this was um, kind of a, a way to um, close that, that voting rights gap a little bit um, for the reservations. And it, it was what uh, a lot of work was put into it even before it hit our committee. And then I believe they had five working hours on it in committee before we even passed it out to ensure that it would do better on the House floor. Um, because this is a tough session for voting rights, it didn't, it, it just kind of barely passed the House floor with 53 to 47 um, on second reading. But then of course, as, as we both know, things that close can, can flip the other way. And it just takes convincing three folks to change their vote. Um, and, and, and then the bill is dead. And that's what happened is, uh, I expect there was some lobbying concerned about, you know, some certain people that they don't want to vote voting and uh, the bill died on the house floor and it was really sad. Yeah, yeah, it was really sad. Um, that was one that I was really rooting for. And then one that I was really hoping, I mean, I, I think that we all kind of knew that it was gonna pass, but it was the um, RIFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act that passed last night, correct? That. Yes, and it passed third reading today. Um, I hate even referring to it by that name because there isn't a huge problem um, with suppressed uh, religion right now. It's, it's really a license to discriminate against people you might not agree with. Um, right. And it was infuriating, some of the arguments we heard uh, involving 10-year-old cases that have since been legislatively fixed um, to ensure those freedoms. So this is just really a swipe at a, a license to discriminate. It's, it was a tough, tough hearing. And I only had to hear it once. I can't even imagine the folks that heard their committee. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just brutal. Um, so we do, we have some questions coming in. So I'm going to stop asking my questions. Um, so um, Tom Woods is asking, what's the word on Senator Fitzgerald's bill to stick consumers with um, coal strip costs? Just had a hearing. You know, um, um, I think we heard it a week or two ago and um, in legislative time that feels like a year ago, but uh, <laughs> in that particular committee, all of our executive action has been put off to the last second for some reason. So uh, we, I don't know the status. I don't even know the rumblings because um, I'm working remotely. I don't get to have the side conversations and stuff, but it is well hated by the Montana people. Um, we have gotten a lot of messages about it, and um, I think there was even, I think our, the Bozeman Daily Chronicle even wrote a, 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 or an editorial specifically pointing out that it's one of the worst bills of the session. So uh, in energy so far, those things have kind of failed about six to six. So hopefully, um, okay. hopefully some of our uh, Republican colleagues come over and help us stop that one, because it will cost ratepayers hundreds of dollars a year. Right. Is this the 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 billion dollar bailout uh, one that we've been? Is that the one that we're talking about? I, I get confused between yeah. the Fitzpatrick uh, and the Fitzgerald bills that are both bad um, as far as energy goes. But uh, so I, I I'm not sure which one's which. But regardless, they're they're both bad, and um, we're going to be doing some pretty heavy studying this weekend. Um, so we can argue against them in executive action next week. Okay, okay, makes sense. So um, no other questions so far, but if you're watching and have a question, feel free to post them. Um, so we do, you do have a four day weekend now. Um, what are you going to be doing with your free time other than researching some of these bills that are coming up next week for executive action? Um, <laughs> a lot of my committee work has slowed down. So I'm gonna see what the team needs. I'm gonna rest. Um, I'm definitely going to sleep. I'm going to cook. I'm going to go for walks. I'm going to do healthy stuff for my brain and body because uh, the session is just uh, 
a crazy marathon and it doesn't seem like the right the best way to like make practical laws but it's the what we have right now because of it's always the way it's always been done. So I'm going to take care of myself and hopefully uh, show up refreshed next week and, and be the best legislator I can be um, for the state. Excellent. Um, good. I'm so glad. So one thing that did, like I just thought about um, the, the money from the American Rescue Plan Act, um, ARPA, as uh, we all love our acronyms in uh, politics, but ARPA, um, that money was, uh, that was put into a bill and debated and did you vote on it in the, in the house yet? Like, has that been voted on? Yes. It passed third reading today, 85 to 15 ish. Okay. Um, and that's an interesting bill. Uh, the session was technically lengthened a little bit so we could assess that out. But what I found in once appropriations has kind of done their battles. Um, once they bring us amendments or whatever uh, to the House floor, they always go party line. There's very little wiggle room on the budget. The parties just kind of stonewall and, and don't, nobody wants to negotiate for some reason on budget stuff. And that's really awful this year because there were so many bad amendments and so many good amendments that failed. Um, it did pass today. Uh, some of us, particularly in, in uh, the counties that have mask mandates, um, voted no because it would reduce relief funding by 20% to those counties that still had public health um, mask mandates and whatnot, which is absolutely ridiculous and political retaliation to the tunes of billion, uh, at least millions of dollars. Uh, so I, I proudly voted against that one and it, as that, that portion made it untenable to me. Right. Even though there was some really good internet and broadband stuff, which I was really excited. Um, but. Right. <laughs> But because the legislature is uh, so unbalanced right now, um, they're really punishing the cities for existing. And uh, that's that's pretty disappointing. It is, it's really disappointing. I mean, I, I have been very grateful to our leaders in Gallatin County um, and the other, you know, more populated counties who have put in the proper precautions that have been, you know, advised by the CDC and, and science, you know, we believe in science and like these things have, I think, saved lives and, and science has proven that it's saving lives. And so the fact that we're going to be punished possibly um, because of that is just, um, well, there's, there's lots of words I could use to describe that, but I won't. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, well, we don't have any other questions. Um, is there anything else that you like that we haven't talked about that you wanted to share? Um, anything coming up or anything that made you excited or um, any or angry even? I don't know. Anything? <laughs> um, I have, I, I guess, one thing I would like to mention is um, the ARPA money coming to the state, a couple billion dollars. A uh, huge boon to Montana if we can distribute it fairly. Um, but besides that 20% thing we just mentioned, uh, I believe the Attorney General just launched uh, a lawsuit against the federal government because there's a stipulation in ARPA that says you can't use this money to hand out in tax cuts because uh, there are problems that this is meant to address, like um, healthcare, housing, infrastructure, all sorts of things that need to be made better uh, to help us recover from the pandemic and help us make, make us stronger for the next one. Um, but unfortunately, what we're seeing is a lot of our services still getting cut. And that money, uh, you know, that could, that could be used for healthcare is showing up as tax cuts for, to the tune of $80 million. So the last couple of weeks, I've stopped uh, voting against cost saving measures because they end up in somebody's wallet um, who, who doesn't need any help. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll Average Montanans will get, you know, 15 bucks and the really ultra wealthy will get uh, hundreds of dollars. And all of that goes to cutting services, despite this huge boon of money. So I don't know what we're doing as a state, but it, it's the budget process is disappointing. And um, without, you know, uh, a slightly better partisan balance, uh, 
a lot of it's just going to turn into corporate handouts and, and that sort of thing. So that was disappointing. And um, I guess I have a lot to, more to say on, on ARPA and everything, but uh, to the good note, there was a lot of money set aside specifically for infrastructure yeah. and broadband. Good. And uh, I believe the democratic bills to use that broadband money have mostly failed except for like one pretty strong one um, that costs nothing. Um, but there's some hope that we're gonna get some last mile uh, uh, underserved areas, some, some broadband service for the first time ever. Good. Yeah. So that's exciting. Uh, you know, of course, that was mandated from the federal government on down and passed entirely by a Democratic legislature. And now we're a, or a Democratic Congress, and now it's up to a Republican legislature to split it up. So there's really some weird stuff going on. Um, I believe they I believe it was in the made budget, they carved out a million dollars to um, help train the universities and prepare them for guns on campus. Uh, despite us being promised that, um, that it wouldn't cost anything to pass that law. So yeah, just some, everybody's kind of carving, uh, the other side's entirely carving out something for their industry or their friends and we're just watching it happen and hoping we can keep our state, uh, you know, intact enough to, um, continue serving uh, all the people. Right, right. Helping people, not hurting people. Um, that's what I would like to start seeing happen again in Montana is helping Montanans, not hurting Montanans. Um, so I guess with that, we don't have any other questions. Um, and I, I just want to say thank you, Representative Cordham, for your time, for being involved, for running for office in the first place. And I'm just going to say, anyone watching this, run for office. Kelly needs you to be serving alongside him next time around. We need people in all levels of government working for the betterment of Montanans. And that takes all of us and, and all of us doing something. And so run for office. You like just run for office. That's all I like. I'll just keep saying it. Run for something um, and and know that we, we can if we get some more Democrats elected next time around we won't have as brutal of a session next time. And maybe we can actually start doing some good things again. Not that good things haven't happened, but you know what I'm saying. So um, run for office. If you can't run for office, help your friends, convince your friends to run for office, get involved. Um, there's lots of good things that you can do off season outside of the legislative session. So stay tuned for those things because they're coming too. Um, and to everyone in Montana, especially the LGBTQ and the transgender community, you belong in Montana. And uh, that's all I need to say about that. You belong. So. Thank you, Allison. All right. Take care, everyone. And uh, rest well. Have a great long weekend, Kelly. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, everyone.